My name is Fido and I have been playing professionally since Season 8. I've also been Challenger and Tristana has been my main champion. And what I promise you, no, I vow that by the end of this guide, not only will you know how to play Tristana, but you'll know how to actually win with this champion. Load into Summoner's Rift and have little tips, little tricks, little cheeses that you can abuse to get yourself kills and to exploit the enemy nexus. Quick disclaimer. Please check the video timestamps in the description below so that you can skip to whichever part you want to watch if you feel like you know something already and make the most out of your time here. Now your two options for runes on Tristana are Lethal Tempo and Fleet Footwork. Now pro players will mostly take Fleet Footwork but don't be baited by this for solo queue. Uh, this rune is very good if you are playing against somebody of equal skill, uh, if you're playing against somebody who plays very respectfully. Um, but in Soliki, that's not the case most of the time. It still has its uses. You can take it into matchups like Syndra uh, or uh, Nico or Vex, uh, matchups where basically not just the healing from it, but the move speed actually helps you dodge skill shots, dodge uh, ability damage in the early game. Uh, I would say that if you're running Fleet Footwork, I would change this up and maybe take Second Wind. So you could think about running this page into something like uh, Nico, uh, Hui, uh, even Xerath uh, are all good uh, poke long range mages uh, where you get value of both of these uh, both of these runes otherwise just run bone plating run lethal tempo 90 percent of your games this is probably the best page uh, you can get a uh, triumph is a personal favorite of mine i find that overheal takes way too long to come online whereas with triumph you can do some really cool outplays in the early game where you do a dive and you kind of jump away and mid-air you get that triumph heal and uh, you stay alive it's very very exciting to do uh, coop is the most consistent damage rune you can get. If they have a lot of tanks, consider switching to cut down. Uh, you can also take Lust Stand if you're the kind of player that just likes to jump in and die a lot. Uh, if your health bar goes down a lot, Lust Stand is good. However, in front to back team fights, you'll generally be full health uh, for the majority of, of your time doing damage. So Coop is just the most consistent rune there. You can also consider taking Demolish into some really easy lanes. Uh, ones that come to mind would be like Kassadin, um, I don't know, like some tanks, like Scion mid maybe. Uh, but the problem with a lot of these, uh, a lot of these matchups is, uh, let's say you take Demolish into Silas. Silas is a melee champion, but the Demolish proc range is actually a lot shorter than your auto attack. So when taking Demolish, you expose yourself to a trade by one of these champions like Silas, Katarina, uh, Yearn, Yasuo. Uh, so I would not recommend taking Demolish. I think it's a bait rune, and I think it's going to cost you more HP than the, the progress on the tower that you get from it. Um, and Overgrowth is kind of just like the most gold value rune. This one gives you about um, 400 gold when you stack it up towards the mid game, uh, three, four, 500 gold, and it doesn't ever stop scaling. I think this is a great way to sort of allow yourself to just build full damage while also not being uh, one shot by assassins. Now, in terms of the uh, the shards, I'd say attack speed, adaptive force is non-negotiable. Now, this one is negotiable, but I would, I, I've looked at the maths, and if you take this flat health rune, yes, it helps your early game all-ins, but actually, the scaling rune gives you 60 health at 6 and 70 health at level 7. So by level 7, this scaling rune has already outscaled the flat rune, and uh, most games aren't decided by level 7, so you'd much rather take... Uh, take this rune. Now the only alternative page you can go is this one. This is a cheese page where you run Flash Ignite um, and you just jump on the enemy's head and you hope that they die. I, I would really not recommend running this page. I think this is uh, all in, all or nothing. As soon as they get Frozen Heart and some tank items, you're not really um, as strong as if you took uh, Lethal or Fleet. But this is certainly an option if you want to have a bit of fun. Uh, you want to go for those 20, 30 kill games. You maybe want to build Collector second. Um, uh, this can be a lot of fun to try. I think most of the time with Tristana, you want to go with Berserker Greaves first base. It kind of gives you a lot of agency to roam, a lot of agency to join skirmishes, make it there faster, helps you push the wave and last it under tower. Uh, you can go for Merc Treads in certain matchups. Uh, if the enemy has two AP champs, a so mid jungle AP, uh, you always go Merc Treads. If they have mid jungle AD, you can consider going Tabbies, although in those games, I would say that Zerkers are still probably better. So let's talk about settings, guys. It's very important you got the right settings so that you can kite as efficiently as possible. The first setting is your camera lock mode. A lot of people use this per side offset, which is absolutely awful. It just puts your character to the left of the screen for no reason. Make sure you've got the set to fixed offset. So when you press spacebar or whatever bind you have to center your character, you'll be right in the middle and you'll have an equal sort of 
uh, distance to click on each side. It's going to make it very, very easy for you to kite in all directions. The second setting I'd recommend is auto attack. Click this, turn this on. This does mean that in lane, in order to stop auto attacking, you automatically do have to press the S key. Um, but in team fights, if you ever find yourself misclicking, uh, your auto attacks will, will automatically go off. If you're like AFK in the shop or something, somebody attacks you, you're going to auto attack them back uh, with this setting on. So I think it's pretty useful to have, but, but it is up to preference. Now make sure you have attack, move, and cursor selected because a lot of the time what will happen is if you don't have this setting on, uh, you'll have a Maokai. Let's say this is Maokai that's chasing me, and this is a Kai'Sa, okay? And I will A move near the Kai'Sa, but maybe I'm not Challenger and I don't have the perfect clicks. So I'm not actually A moving on top of Kai'Sa, it's like near her. It's pretty close, but it's just going to attack whoever's closer to me. It's not actually going to attack whoever's closer to my cursor. Um, so it doesn't care about your intention at all. And, you know, if I'm hitting Maokai instead of Kai'Sa, I'm going to die. So this is a really important setting. That way you don't have to be perfect with your clicks. You have a little bit of room for error. Um, so that as long as you click kind of around the hitbox of your enemy, the aim move will try to guess uh, where you want it to attack and hopefully hit the right target. Now the second thing I want to talk about is your clicks. Your clicks are very, very important, guys. Make sure that you don't do these very long motions with your click. Make sure that you click as close to your character as possible because this will give you the sharpest turns, the sharpest angles, and make you very, very hard to hit with skill shots, okay? And also, it will increase the frequency of your clicks because here between clicks, I have to actually wait to flick my mouse, uh, whereas here it's very, very short motions. And secondly, make sure that you don't get lazy. Um, it's very easy to do with this setting, right? Where you you just kind of like, you kite like this. You see a lot of people kiting like this where they're just not moving their mouse at all. They're just right click, A move, right click, A move. Um, and, and vice versa, even if you have this on, don't get lazy and click on the enemy and then move near the enemy. Click, move, click, move. Don't, don't do this. Just make sure you're always respecting the execution element of the game. Click on the enemy, then click back near you. Click on the enemy, click back near you. Try and do this because this will build good habits um, over time. You'll get used to it and your movements will be the best they can be uh, because you're clicking close to your character and then right on the enemy's head, you're not getting lazy. Let's talk about Tristana combos really quickly. Uh, the most basic one is just the WE, uh, which gives you your first stack for free, uh, applies a slow, and then you can uh, you can do the, the last three autos to get the big explosion damage. Now here, make sure that you press your Q after you land. Don't press your Q before you jump because otherwise you're just wasting one second on jumping where you can't auto attack anyway. So go WE and then Q as you're about to land to get the full duration of the attack speed. Uh, the other combo is your EQ auto auto alt auto. So you just go EQ auto auto alt auto um, and that does the biggest big burst damage if somebody's half health you can kind of kill them with that. Now if you land your W then it just becomes E auto alt auto. So you basically do one less auto, um, and that's pretty much all there is to Tristana. You can also do the alt flash uh, to sort of uh, engage with people. If somebody's here, my jungle is coming out. I wanna, I wanna help him um, engage. I will do something like this. You jump in with the W, apply the slow, close the distance, and then um, alt them into your jungler. So let's talk about playing against champions with line skill shots. Things like LeBlanc, Huey, Zerath. When you jump in. The, the way that his brain works is he's going to think that you're going to keep following the same path, right? Because it, if he throws his E out too early while you're in the air and he misses it, he's dead. So he's going to hold it until the exact time that you arrive, and then he's just going to throw it where he thinks you're going to go. So if you jump this way, for example, then from Hui's perspective, he's expecting you to either walk this way or this way, but always sort of in this trajectory, because this is where his escape is. And this is the direction that you jumped. So just imagine the direction that you jump plus his escape. This is kind of the arc that Hui will expect you to walk. So what you want to do is do the exact opposite. As soon as you land, instead of auto attacking, so actually miss an auto attack, land and immediately start clicking the opposite direction of where you are going. And you will actually find that you will dodge so many of these line skill shots by just following this easy rule. I've landed, I've done my one auto E, and I've immediately immediately click left. I'm not trying to get the four stacks explosion or anything like that. I'm not worried about that. I know that as soon as I get feared, this trade is losing for me. So if I can dodge the fear, even at the cost of a couple auto attacks, it is 100% worth it. And you can see we play it, he loses, uh, he loses his only defensive ability, and I get a really nice trade, get his ult out as well. So in terms of CSing a normal wave, not under tower, I find that prepping the first melee minion and then starting to hit the ranged creeps as soon as you're um, you're in range to hit them is the best uh, way to efficiently farm and not drop minions at all. 
Um, so you prep the first minion as soon as that wave comes in, and I'm in range to auto attack these minions. I'll switch to the range creeps, obviously pick up the melee uh, once it takes aggro, and then just ignore the two melees. Hopefully they take an equal amount of damage, and then all I need is just one auto uh, to grab both of them. And the range is already dead, so I have my turn nice and early. So another example of how to prep creeps, just think about it uh, in order that you think they'll take the tower damage from. So one, two, three, that's what I'm hypothesizing here. So the creep that is least likely to take the first hit, I'm gonna prep that with a couple autos so that it's ready to explode um, if I feel like I'm gonna miss anything uh, from this wave. So I prep it with two autos and then I go back to the melees. I know that with my Q up, you'll always be able to get two extra tower shots after the tower is fired, uh, two extra auto attacks after the tower is fired. And so you'll be able to get the melee. And then the first creep that I know the first creep for sure will take aggro is the middle one. So I just completely leave it, don't touch it. And this is kind of the HP you want. You want your one creep to be full HP, one creep to be very low, and one creep to be about half. And then uh, you'll be able to get these three range creeps every single time. Congratulations, you have now done all your runes, understood the different item builds, and locked in Tristana mid. Now you're in Summoner's Rift, and where do we go from here? Uh, to start off, Tristana's W is extremely OP level 1. Uh, it resets on takedown, it's AoE 60% slow, which is outrageous for any level 1 ability. And obviously you've also got uh, Triumph uh, to give you back some, some health and make the kills and assists more enticing. So what I would recommend is just start by spamming your team to go in here and walk over. Make sure that you take this path like this, because then you will not be seen until until you leave this bush, so go like this and walk in a straight line, okay? And this way, no matter where the enemy is, they won't be able to spot you because as we can see from this perspective, uh, there's a there's straight up just a black blind spot here because this bush uh, acts as a wall, okay? So once you get into this bush and all of your teammates are behind you, uh, you just pretty much blind W, just spamping on the way and just blind W and you will double slow whoever's in this bush, your teammates can catch up and you'll get some guaranteed flashes. Now once you're done with this, the next step to the invade is you wanna actually take control, so you could could go here, try to interrupt the recalls, or you could ward the buff, but make sure you do ward the buff if you do this invade, because there's a very high chance that your jungler actually gets invaded on the opposite side. Um, so once you get some flashes here, your jungler can go back to doing red, and he could do a red into blue path and just split the map if he's being traded on. Now the second invade you can try to do is spamping your team to go here, and then just kind of like ping, ping where the, you want them to stand, all right, and then you just go up to this wall and pretty much blind jump in this bush. But it's important that you actually jump from where I'm standing instead of from here, because if you jump from here, somebody seeing somebody standing there could spot you. Uh, but if you jump from this angle, somebody standing there will not spot you. And so you just jump in the bush. If there's someone in the bush, obviously your teammates are right next to you. They can help you out. But often what will happen is you'll actually see a champion standing here. And what you're going to have to do then is just spam ping your cooldown for your team, ping them back, spam ping your cooldown, and just walk around. Just walk around while you're waiting for the cooldown. And then once... You know, just keep your team updated every couple of seconds. Once your cooldown's back up, you'll be able to see him uh, as your teammates walk in. And you just get the W slow. You're already behind him. You walk with him. you got your lethal going. He can't really run this way because your team is cutting him off. And you get a nice, easy kill. Uh, after you've done with that, make sure that you drop a, drop a ward on the raptors or drop a ward on the red. Unless your jungler is starting it. So let's say you're versing a melee champion. Somebody who has an AoE wave clear ability level 1. Um, so if you do nothing to the wave, they'll simply get the first three creeps. I'm talking about Akali, uh, Silas, Q, Yasuo, Yon, the list goes on. So what you got to do is you got to let the wave meet first in the middle. Uh, don't break the formation. Uh, you can see here, as soon as the creeps are in the correct formation, which is like this, right? They're as close to each other as possible. I'm going to basically draw a line on these three creeps, you know, the line that they're standing on. And I'm just going to either cross the line or stand right on this line, somewhere here, anywhere here is okay, um, in the circle, and just auto one of these creeps, it's gonna pull the aggro of everything towards you, and you wanna walk backwards in a diagonal line, vice versa, if you're doing it on this side, you'd be walking backwards in a diagonal line like this to drop the aggro, and uh, by doing this, instead of the minions having equally low health, and you also being able to last hit with one ability, uh, I'm gonna make the minions focus fire one creep at a time, uh, and that forces Yasuo to walk up for every single creep, so he has to do it three times, once for each creep, and I can have a really good start, get a load of poke down uh, while the lane has just begun. 
Now at the start of the game, make sure that you do not score an ability on Tristana. Just keep your points and uh, see what the enemy team is doing. Sometimes there'll be an invade. Sometimes there'll be an opportunity for uh, a strong E start. You just have to see what happens. In this game, I see my team getting invaded. And when this happens, it's really important that you do not touch the wave at all. Do not touch the wave. Do not make it slow push because you're putting yourself in a timer by doing that. Instead, uh, block the enemy mid from walking in. So uh, here, I look if I can contribute to the invade, but it looks like the play is over. I go back in the bush, and I'm trying to play for the denial of 3 XP worth of minions. So here, I skill my E. If you know that the enemy has to check uh, the bush you're in, then your E level 1 is obviously a very strong start. Because uh, they can't keep walking at you. Uh, the E damage is too much. So once you have a successful all-in level 2, it's important to prep for the level 3 kill with a ward around the 215 to 230 timer. We want to place a ward in river any way you like. Um, just to protect yourself from the jungle gank, make you feel safe. And make sure that you don't feel rushed. Okay, so here for example, the creep is about to die to give me level 3, but he's respecting it. He's playing very, very safe. So we don't need to rush it. We don't need to jump in and, and get two autos and an E and, and knock it out W reset and then potentially miss out on a kill opportunity because we're basically pushing the wave as we're taking that, that short, meaningless trade. Okay, so just be patient. Think of a reason for him to walk up. The best reason is the cannon. So your only job from this position is just to make sure that the cannon's HP is different. Okay, you want to make sure that his cannon is slightly lower than yours so that you can get his cannon first and then he's still walking up for yours. You get the jump. Um, and you punish his greed. Now in the previous example, we had a look at how to bully a weak laner. But what if you're against a bully yourself? What if you're against the likes of an Orianna, uh, an Annie, a Cassio, something that actually does have either more range than you or wins against, an, against you in an all-in, has a disengaged stun, something like that. So what you gotta do is you gotta walk up before the wave meets, okay? Walk up and try and get two autos. Just two, just two free hits on the first minion um, so that you're ahead in terms of push and that you are able to hit level two first and uh, go for a nice trade. Because in these kind of lanes, if you let them push you in, it's going to be very hard for you to, to farm under tower. And uh, yeah, you can see here, I get the two autos off. And now your goal, once you get the two autos, you just want to match. Okay, so if they're spam autoing the wave, then you spam auto the wave. If Annie doesn't use her stun and just hits the wave, then that's exactly what I'm going to do because I know that I'm already ahead by, you know, 100 HP uh, in the minion health and I'm going to hit two first. And if we both don't touch the wave or just, uh, you know, last hit, then the wave's going to stay in the middle. I'm going to hit my level two first and I'll get a good trade. So it's, it's kind of the balls in her park. She has to make the move. Uh, she has to compensate somehow by either using abilities on the wave or trying to force a trade on me uh, because she's losing push. Now you can see that I'm just happily farming, uh, being patient, not skilling anything, just seeing what happens. And, but as soon as she uses the stun there, as soon as she uses the stun, I'm already pre-planning. I'm going to jump in with my W. I'm going to go for a trade. But what's the other condition to make our trade better? Of course, if the enemy is on cooldown or if the enemy doesn't have a key ability like the fear, like Vex could have her E, but if she doesn't have the fear, then you can still jump in and go for a trade. Same thing with Annie. Um, the crucial part is I'm going to take all of this aggro if I jump straight away there. If I jumped as soon as she used her cooldown, I would probably still lose that trade or it would be equal because I'm tanking the whole wave, even though I'm not stunned. So what you want to do is you want to just try and jump as late as possible. Try and jump when all of the creeps are pretty much dead and that will give you the best trade imaginable. Um, I'm waiting for this to die, waiting for this to die, and when there's only one creep, I'll jump in. I know my W is going to pretty much kill it. I take only one volley from the creep, and I get a really nice trade-off uh, with my lethal tempo. My lane is pretty much one. If you find yourself two-wave crashing like this on Tristana, in order to enable the level 3 or lane, you're going to have to pull the third wave, okay? Because otherwise it's going to stagger on your existing minions and make your wave move up too far, okay? So keep the line in the middle. Uh, we need two. Auto attack one of the melee creeps and pull it. Now each melee creep has a defensive range, okay? So if you're standing outside of its defensive range and you auto attack it, the auto won't pull the aggro. So if it feels like it's not working in your games, then just make sure that you're standing a little bit closer. Here you can see I walked up just a little bit closer to the creep. Now I'm within its defensive range and as soon as I auto it, uh, it's going to switch aggro to me and start chasing me. I do need to keep autoing it just to keep the aggro up. Um, drag it to the middle of the lane. And uh, now it's going to be way easier for me to actually jump on Annie uh, when I hit my level up. Whereas uh, if she's close to her tower, uh, there's not really much you can do. 
Now one thing you've got to be very cautious of is after 5 minutes, once the plating extra armor has gone down, it can be very, very tempting to walk up and actually use your E on the tower to push faster, get a nice plate. Uh, but this is a double-edged sword. As soon as you use your cooldown on the tower, the enemy champ will uh, attack you and you will lose a trade and lose CS because of a bad recall. So what you've got to make sure is that you walk up, do one auto, click backwards. One auto, click backwards. And never use your E so that as soon as she goes for a trade, you're ready to fight back. One thing you should also consider is when you hit level 6 on Tristana, that's a really easy way to get your 4 proc damage on the E, and that's another 300 damage that you have for free. So if the enemy doesn't see that you're 6, if you're about to hit 6, that's a great time to try and initiate a trade because you can, you can get a nice all-in. But obviously the two prerequisites always is you need a creep that is low so that the enemy is forced to walk forward. And as your creep is dying, you don't even need to look at him. You don't even need to look at the enemy. You just, as the creep is dying, you're already immediately... Uh, jumping forward and uh, trying to get a good trade off with your W because your goal, like we said, is just to land the W slow. If the W slow lands, your trade will always be good. So one thing you can you should consider when uh, setting up ganks with Tristana is that you can actually lean to the opposite side because your W is a very good escape. Um, and leaning to the opposite side of your jungler sells the idea that your jungler is on the side that you're playing towards. See so here, for example, I ping that I want my jungler to come and gank mid, and I immediately start posturing down. Because when you posture down, naturally your opponent will posture up, because this jump distance is a lot longer than this jump distance. So if he stays here, it's way easier for me to jump on him and initiate a good trade, whereas if he stays opposite me, then in the 1v1 isolated matchup, he's actually winning. Uh, because I don't have a way to, to, to trade him, and he's just constantly poking my HP with his E. And uh, by selling this narrative that my jungle is bot side because I'm warding bot side, it gives Lux the false sense of security. She's hugging top side, she hasn't warded, and it sets up a really nice easy gank. So make sure if your jungle is coming from this side, you just quickly posture down, see if you can force the enemy mid to actually hug the opposite side, and just make it very nice and easy for your jungle to gank. So just something for you to think about when skirmishing with Tristana. Remember that your W will reset when you get the one kill. So if you're playing a 2v2 around mid, you can play extremely aggressively um, and put yourself in a bad spot as long as you get that one kill. Here, for example, I know that Hui won't die to my Hecarim solo if I just leave him be. Uh, so I have to keep hitting, even though I'm, I'm tanking this entire wave and there's a Graves that will probably go on me, I have to help my uh, Hecarim kill the Hui and rely on the jump reset to actually get out. Now the Graves dashes into me and the most natural thing that most players would do here is you would simply dash away, right? The threat is coming from this angle, so you're looking to go away from the threat in any of these directions, right? This is also a threat. Um, but because we know that Hui will die, he has no flash, if we jump forward, we can actually just do a double leap um, and get out as well as helping our Hecarim uh, secure the kill. Now let's say you've had some good trades, you are low and your opponent is low. But unfortunately, you can't just jump forward and kill them because you'll take the aggro, they will CC you, like in this case, Ari Charm, and you will actually die. So you need to get creative. Now one of Tristana's strengths is her ability to roam. Uh, so if you can fake a roam, uh, that could invite your opponent to actually follow and get a cheese off. You can also fake a base to do the same thing. So what I'm doing here is I'm walking in a straight line to this bush to say that I'm not basing, because if I was basing, the most obvious path would be like this to my tower. So I'm saying I, I could be roaming, uh, I could be walking into your jungle, um, and meanwhile I'm gonna place a ward over the wall so I can see when, when she's coming in, and as soon as I see her coming in, um, I will jump on her and kill her. Uh, you can either do this from the bush, uh, or you can do this from the wall because this wall uh, blocks line of sight, so even if Ari is standing here, she would not be able to see me uh, hugging this wall. Uh, either of those spots are fine to do this cheese, but it won't always work, because if your opponent just walks in the middle of the lane, there's not really anything you can do, especially if he walks uh, as his creeps are coming in, because again, the same concept, you'll jump in, you'll take the aggro, and you'll die. So that's where we need to take it a step further. We need to get even more creative. We're going to try and play with that little 8 second ticking uh, prediction in his head about when you're going to be basing. You know, he thinks that if you don't appear on this wave after 8, 9, 10 seconds, you must have based. So we're going to put ourselves as close as we possibly can without actually breaking the fog line, which is about uh, here for Ari. Now, if Ari was already at the wave, we could go as close as this because the creeps will not see anything um, past this sort of, this pocket here. So you could just imagine this little rock here. You can stand right here, come out, as soon as they've used their abilities and kill them. But if there's a champion or if the, creeps are, if the creeps are here, or obviously if the champion's here, you have to stand a little bit further back. So these are sort of the two 
uh, the two cheese lines that you can go for. You just wait for her to start hitting the wave. Um, also remember that her screen right now is probably something like this. You know, she's not looking at you. Uh, at, at worst, you're going to be somewhere at the bottom right of her screen in her peripheral vision. It will take a while for her brain to register that you've come out. Um, and chances are she's already on cooldown. Even if she's not on cooldown, she's going to panic. And that's kind of what we want. Um, I find that this cheese will get you a lot of kills, uh, especially in higher ranks. You can see we jump in. Uh, we should have probably flashed the charm, but uh, we agreed <laughs> we didn't flash the charm. We get the kill anyway. But the concept is really, really important, and uh, practice this in your games. So here's another example from the same game. I have Pryo. I'm pretty much just pushing every lane on repeat. And this time around, we have the enemy jungler starting Dragon because you can see that my Hecarim is ganking top. Now, that means that we're down a player in the bot side of the map. However, it, it shouldn't uh, decentivize you from just uh, looking for something. You should still look. Uh, I go into a bush. I've swept both bushes, so I know I haven't been spotted. And I know for a fact that Syndra has to walk in here because if she doesn't, then it's a 3v3. Okay, and I'm pretty strong at this stage of the game, so if it's a 3v3, it's probably winning for us. So I know that she blindly has to check either this way or this way, and if she's going to ward something, she's most likely going to ward this ward, uh, this, this bush over the wall. Uh, so I, I take the least likely uh, warded path, and I just sit here. Um, I, I have no intention to go down to go down here, it's a complete fake because I know that we're down numbers. I know that if I go here, then Syndra's covering my escape and I'm pretty much just going to go one for one or even die for nothing. And uh, yeah, we just go for a little cheese on our lane. And the moral of the story is pretend you're roaming and then just cheese your laner. That is the Tristana way. That is what's going to win you games. So a lot of people ask me this question. They say, Fido, I've pushed my wave. My jungler's starting the objective. What am I supposed to do about it? Okay, should I go hit it with him? Uh, should I keep eyes on my mid? Do I just walk up mid and try and spot him? Do I go deep in the enemy jungle? What do I do? And the answer is, just imagine a line like this between you and the objective. Okay, so the, the objective here is Rift. And make sure that the enemy Karma or whatever the enemy mid is cannot cross this line before you. So I'm always ready to cross this line and link up with my Hecarim before Karma does, okay? Your goal is to not allow the enemy jungle to come from this side and your mid to come from this side, essentially cutting Hecarim off and just killing him because he has no way out. You, you don't wanna allow this to happen. But at the same time, if you sit an enemy jungle and mid walk in together, you're gonna get chunked or killed, you know, because your Hecarim isn't there to help you. So you wanna help him without putting yourself at risk. And this bush is great to sit in. Uh, what you should do is actually not walk like I did because this could be warded. And if this is warded, um, it only gives vision to about here. So all you do is you just walk up and you just sit somewhere here in this bush, somewhere here. Because regardless of whether it's, it's uh, trinket warded or not, the enemy mid cannot see you. And you're also very close um, to link up with your jungle if he's in any danger. And uh, alternatively, you can absolutely sit in this bush. You can also sit in, in this bush maybe, depending on which jungle you have. And uh, yeah, so just be patient here. Uh, it's important that you show intent. So I know that this is a hard kill for me to get by myself. So I'm spamping on the way, on the way. I want my Hecarim to get off this camp and actually hit this guy with me. If he was a good player, he would. Unfortunately, he doesn't, but that's okay. I still just wait till the last second, jump in, and uh, don't let my mid walk into grubs and uh, contest grubs. We ended up getting a kill here, but I really shouldn't be able to get that kill without my jungle. But I did my job, right? My job is just to not allow my laner to impact the objective. I don't need to hit the objective, I don't need to do anything else, just stop your laner from coming in and use it as a way to get yourself an advantage. Now when it comes to team fighting on Tristana, you have two options. You can either play front to back, or you can try to flank. If there's an existing fight somewhere on the map, you're coming from behind, you're flanking, your number one goal is to reset your W. So don't be afraid to use your ult to last hit somebody that's low, uh, just so you have your W reset to immediately chase, close the distance, or get out if needed. So when you're thinking about team fighting on Tristana front to back, it's important that you assess the threat. So which champions can kill me? Uh, which CC abilities do I need to dodge? In this game, it's just Ari Charm and Aatrox. So as soon as I see the Aatrox is occupied um, and Ari is on cooldown, I jump forward. But keep in mind, I'm never breaking formation. It's really important as an AD carry, you do not break formation. You can stand uh, on top of your front line and hit as much as possible, but don't ever cross this line. So whatever line your, your melee champs are holding, you're standing behind that, right? Because you need to be protected uh, and you need to value your life above theirs. So, uh, the team fights are not working well for you and you've decided to do the Fiora split push playstyle, which is totally viable in Tristana and why I love the champion because you're so versatile. How do we decide when we should back off and when we should push 
and commit for the towers and maybe even die? How do we know what we're going to get is going to be worth it? Well, the first thing you've got to ask yourself is which one of these champions on the enemy team has the damage to kill me? In this game, there's a Fed Lux, there's a Fed Jax, there's a Fed Jin. Okay, the Shaco is pretty weak, the Bard is obviously support. Which one of these champions has the CC to kill me? Okay, so this is a 2, this is a 2, this is a 1. So if I see a Jax recall, then I'm potentially going to be backing off because the Jax can both engage on me, he can lock me down, um, and he, he has the damage to kill me. But if I see just the Jin, or if I see a Jin Lux recall together, I would not be worried. I would continue hitting this tower because I know that a worst case scenario, I just jump away and they have no way to chase me. Same thing here. If it's uh, Shaco Bard, uh, that the recall to try and stop me. I know that these guys do not have the damage to kill me through my shield bow, through my BT. Um, so they either need three champions or they need the right combination, a one and a two to kill me. We'll keep playing the clip and uh, you can see that I'm just taking this tower. I can see everybody's disappeared uh, off the map, off Fog of War. So I'm actually kiting into the base, expecting to die, but I want to make sure that I get the inhib. If I do die, that's a worthwhile death. There's no objectives up on the map. Uh, so there's nothing for them to get off my death. And then I see that suddenly all the champions appear again and all the twos have stopped recalling. So we can see that the uh, the Lux, the Jin, and the Shaco are all on the map. So the only one threatening me here is the Bard who doesn't have any damage. So I continue pushing and I even uh, consider the end. Now I see a TP is coming in. Now that's a Lux Bard combo. So here, when I see this TP come in, I know that if I walk up to this tower, they now have a 1 and a 2 in place. So if I do commit for the objective, I will most likely be dying for it. Uh, and you just have to assess, okay, is this a worthwhile death? Is there anything up for them to punish? Are they going to end the game if I die here? If the answer to all of those is no, then absolutely just go forward and die for the tower. Uh, because it's going to make you know, your life easier in you know 5 minutes or 3 minutes or 2 minutes when you come back here. You can actually have an empty nexus uh, to end the game with. Uh, when everybody is off the map, you can see that nobody is showing, so I don't feel safe. I'm hitting the Krugs. I don't know if there's two or three champions potentially coming towards me. But then as soon as I see some people show up, I'm immediately going back on the wave and starting to pressure, making sure that I, I pull at least one person here. Uh, but I'm not jumping forward. Keep in mind, I'm not jumping forward because I can't see everybody on the map. I can only see Bard, Lux, and Jax. I don't know where Shaco is. Uh, so I'm just waiting for that information. All I'm doing is just looking at my map here. I'm not actually uh, looking at my screen even. I'm just looking at my map, looking at the icons. As soon as I see the Shaco icon, I would jump forward. If I don't see the Shaco icon, then my job is done. I'm just assuming that the Shaco is bot, which he is. And uh, your job is just to buy time here, right? Your teammates should be winning in the 4v3. So you just want to play this as slow as possible. Um, kite away, stay alive, and give your team time to make progress on the other side where they have the numbers. So let's quickly talk about Tristana matchups. Uh, at the bottom, we've just got the can't lose tier, and pretty much all of these champions uh, don't have CC, um, are very susceptible to your jump combo. You can pretty much just jump on them at every stage of the game, um, or you simply outrange them. You have complete control of the lane. It just feels like you can either play to scale, you can play to solo kill your lane, you can play to uh, get plates against champs like Tristan, uh, champs like Katarina, or Kassadin, or Singed. You can easily hit the tower, so. Uh, very easy matchups there. Now we've got the second tier for easy win. Um, this this tier you can navigate very well if you're a skilled Tristana player because there's a lot of outplay potential on your end and not much outplay potential for the enemy champs. So something like a Zoe, uh, if she hits you with a bubble, you can buffer the sleep um, and kind of uh, make her miss her Q. You can also just try to jump to the side um, to dodge the sleep instead of uh, jumping in a straight line. Same thing with a Silas. You know, Silas uses his Q on, on a minion. You can jump forward. Uh, because he only has two out of three abilities, you win that trade. So most of these lanes are basically champs with easily bufferable abilities, squishy champions that you're able to pretty much one-shot if they miss position. And we've got the skill issue tier, which is basically where it's... It's completely dependent on your understanding of the matchup. So Vex, for example, right? If she walks up with fear and she presses EQ, there's no real counterplay. You will just get hit by the EQ and you will just take a, a bunch of damage. But if you understand the matchup, okay, Vex fear has a 20 second cooldown. Now for the next 20 seconds, I actually have complete control of the lane. If there's a low creep, I'm going to jump on Vex. I'm going to get a trade back. Um, and, and at the end of the day, you're going to have prior most of the time in this lane as well. So these are lanes where you can maintain prior quite easily. Um, but if you jump in at the wrong time, if you don't choose your jumps carefully, you can get solo killed. Something like a Rumble with Ignite, a Yone, a Relia. If you jump in 
uh, full full HP against full HP, you will die. So uh, that's that's pretty much uh, this tier list there. And uh, the hard to trade tier is the one we should talk about the most, which is Nico. Uh, this champion you cannot jump on because her E plus the triple wave of her Q, if you do get hit by the cooldown, it will completely chunk you. And in this in this kind of a lane, you just have to try and play to push the wave. There's no other there's no other way. The trades are only available if she's on cooldown. If she has the spells, then it's just a 50-50 dead even matchup. You hit the creeps, she hits the creeps, and you handshake at that. Uh, same thing with Syndra. Her E actually has two parts of CC to it. There's the knockback with the wave, as well as the stun of the orb itself. So if you try to buff a Syndra E while standing near her, you will just get interrupted halfway. Your jump will go on cooldown. The damage won't go off. And same thing if you try to jump on her. Um, and basically, she will just do a third of your HP and walk away while you're stunned. And very likely, you'll actually take minion aggro as well because when you jump and press E at the same time, your E counts as a single target ability and all the minions will aggro you same as it would with an auto attack. So uh, these kind of lanes are fine. You just have to go into it expecting to have a boring game where you just go 100 CS at 10 minutes and play to scale. And then we've got Cassio and Yasuo, which I would say a dodge of 15. Cassio, because this champion absolutely outscales you. She has more impact than team fights uh, because she provides some CC and provides very similar damage to you. Um, she can just win trades by running at you in lane. Uh, if she runs at you and lands her abilities, even if she's tanking creeps, you still lose. Uh, so this champion kind of beats you at every stage of the game. And most importantly, it's it's a bit hard to buffer, uh, buffer her W because if you buffer her W incorrectly, you just get grounded. And uh, if you press it a second too late, you just die. And same thing with her ultimate, you know, if you jump in for an aggressive trade and you don't uh, sidestep the uh, the stun, um, you will just lose that uh, lose that entirely. But even if you do sidestep the stun, chances are you, you probably still die. So these th th this matchup is very, very bad. I would avoid just, uh, I would uh, advise just dodging it. We've got the Yasuo lane as well, where his wind wall eats your E, it eats your ult, it eats your auto attacks. So you basically have no guaranteed damage. You can never jump forward. And if he gets on top of you, you can't actually knock him away with the ult because if he puts a wind wall on top of you and you ult, your ult's gone. Um, and he's still on top of you and... Yeah, it's a very, very hard matchup where he can also use the wave to chase you after you rocket jump away. Um, I would just recommend not playing these matchups, dodging them, um, or playing extremely safe and just playing for team fights, uh, scaling up, avoiding trades as much as possible, kind of playing for prior, uh, playing for objectives, not expecting to win this lane. If you got through that whole video, I salute you. You are now an official graduate of Fido Academy, a resident Tristana expert, and I wish you the best of luck uh, in your rank journey. A few little shout outs. I have a uh, coaching Discord that you can join if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'll also be uploading free content on there, uh, some uh, potential matchup spreadsheets for Tristana and other champions. Uh, there's also little channels that you can ask me questions about uh, the matchup or mid lane in general or jungle. So feel free to come by, uh, say hi. Uh, please do subscribe to my YouTube. Uh, leave a like if you have any comment for suggestions or feedbacks uh, about what I could do in the future. I'd really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, just have a great day.